So how does the Arch type plugin find all the Arch type available in the system? In the previous demo, when you just type uh, Maven Arch type generate, a list of Arch type was displayed to you by the plugin for uh, your selection. And the complete list was around 1100 and uh, only the first 10, say for example, that I'm showing you right now, uh, says displayed to you. So um, going back to the original question, how does a plugin find these details about different arch types? How did it find that there was a, a Kafka or a Spring or uh, say a Grails project or whatever? The answer is that the arch type plugin maintains the detail about different arch type in an internal catalog which comes with the plugin itself. The Archtype catalog is simply an XML file and in addition to the internal catalog, you can also maintain a local Archtype catalog and this is available in your user home dot m2 Archtype catalog dot XML and by default it's an empty file uh, if you want you can go and uh, check it over there. Um, then there is also a remote catalog which is available at uh, repo1.maven.org as you would have seen in the demo it, it displays somewhere and um, it's under the maven2 archtype catalog.xml and by default the archtype plugin will load all the available archtype from the local and remote catalogs. If we go back to the arch type list displayed by the plugin and uh, when you type the maven arch type generate by looking at each entry we can determine whether a given arch type is loaded from the internal, local or a remote catalog. So the last step is um, creating a repository and we're going to use the same command that we use to create the project we're just going to change some of the things uh, one thing that you would have noticed is the uh, module elements uh, that have been created it allows you to declare the child modules in the multi-model project so as you generate each module maven intelligently register them as a child model so that's the purpose of creating all this project under the pom uh, the zero parent project and uh, additionally it also modifies the individual module xml and adds the parent information and i'm, I'm going to show you all the pomod xml files uh, after we build this repository so um, let's go ahead and uh, create the repository and again i'm just showing you to make sure that you're still under the zero dash parent folder zero hyphen parent folder and for this uh, we're going to keep everything exactly the same and uh, the only thing we're going to change is the artifact name we're going to call it uh, zero hyphen repository and that's it we're just going to hit enter and wait for it to complete and again you'll see that in the reactor build order section it has it shows that your first project is zero parent then it's going to build a zero web project then the zero service project you don't see a repository yet but because it has just been created but uh, if you will run the maven package now it's going to show you everything so let's go and take a look at the uh, pom.xml of the parent you'll see that the uh, it has defined the artifact id as parent and it has uh, automatically registered all the modules just like it's uh, showing here and uh, first is web service repository that's the order now let's take a look at the web and if you'll see that it automatically updated the pom xml and added the parent in information it says that zero dash parent is the uh, parent folder structure for this and everything else is the same uh, group id and uh, in the zero service again the parent is zero parent and artifact id is zero service same goes for the repository and there there so artifact repos artifact is zero repository and now what we're going to do is we're going to see how it's going to build everything and 
I'm already in zero dash parent and all I'm going to do do here is I'm going to now package the whole project and I'm going to type maven package and what it's going to do is it's going to run every single module in the sequence as it's shown here first it's going to build the parent then web service followed by repository so it's trying to run all the tests and here's a reactor summary it shows that uh, parent web service repository one run in this order and those were the time it took to execute them.